<laughs> Are you ready to punctuate your business with retreats? I'm Darla Ledoux. I'm the founder of Sourced and author of two books, including one called Retreat and Grow Rich. So I'm a little passionate about this topic. And I'm here with Ashley Woods. She is our resident legacy builder here at Sourced. Hello. <laughs> so we're going to riff a little bit on why you might want to punctuate your business with retreats. So first, I'm going to share four reasons you might consider this, and we'll break it down a little bit. One, magical people need structure, and retreats are structure. Two, this is the best way to attract more aligned clients. If you're working with clients over time, I highly recommend having them come on retreat with you. Three, retreats give source a time and place to show up for you and send the perfect people. And we'll tell you why that's important in a minute. And four, every time you host a retreat, which for us is any multi-day transformational experience, we every time you host one, you're going to evolve your business model and your body of work. And it's a great way. This is why we're calling it punctuating your business with retreats, because each time you host one, it's like a little punctuation mark where you're putting a line in the sand, what this is about, how you're going to show up, who you're going to invite, and life starts to expand. We Over here at Sourced, we say we like to follow what's alive, and retreats are a great way to do that. So here we go. We're going to dive in. So Ashley, the first point is that ma magical people need structure. And you're coaching a lot of our clients one-on-one -on -one right now. I know you have your own experience with having your retreat-based business. Can you, what comes up for you around structure? Um, well, the structure is like the space in which the magic gets to come and play, right? But I also think of it like, like a good deadline, you know, because I think I know for myself and maybe plenty of you can relate to having the thing that you intend to do, you want to do, you need to do, and yet you're not doing it. And then all of a sudden there's that that deadline, there's the day it needs to be submitted or the day those people are showing up or whatever it is. And that particular deadline, you know, starts to move you into action, right? So if we don't have putting those things on the calendar, that specific commitment to show up and be a certain way, it automatically starts to organize us in a way that, you know, that without that, we wouldn't. And it was yeah. certainly true for me in my own business, like putting a retreat on, and when we do it now, you know, when we put the dates on the calendar, everything starts to organize around making that happen and bringing that to life. Yeah. And what, why would you say it's different than like a, oh, I'm going to launch a program or I'm going to have three clients by this time. What makes a retreat such a strong, potent deadline? Well, the retreat has a life of its own for one. So it's like this thing that wants to come through us and um, be expressed through us. And it has a particular way it's calling us forward, like someone that we need to become to fulfill on that. I guess you could say that that's true in a launch to some degree, but my experience is a bit different with that. So um, yeah, there's nothing like a retreat. There's not, there really isn't right. It starts, it, it starts calling in the, the people who are meant to be in this, the experience and the space that you're creating. Um, like they start making their way as soon as the space gets created, but it's really hard for that to happen if there's no place for them to show up. Right. If there's no time, date, location, <laughs> then we're all just kind of floating around out here. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me want to jump to number three that we talked about. Source has a time and place to show up. So mm -hmm. the first thing I want to say, source, God, spirit, the universe, collective energy, however you like to think about it, the quantum field, right, starts to pull people in to this conversation, this 
topic, right? Well, however you title your retreat, whatever the experiences you're creating, maybe the the land itself or the destination is going to resonate with certain people and mm-hmm. starts to pull those people in. And then Source has a time and place to show up. So obviously our company is called Sourced. Um, we believe that everything is sourced, that the, it's always the right people and the right conversation at the right time for them and for you as a leader. So when you said that, you know, that that really is why putting these things on the books makes such a difference. And I do think it can happen in a launch, but there's nothing like getting in person to, mm-hmm. you know, call you into being. Well, when you, we're talking about it, like a punctuation mark, right? A launch is more spacious and spread over time. So it is its own little container of sorts, but the retreat is more, (laughs) whatever you call that. Just like that. (laughs) Yes. The retreat makes your magic come alive. So here we talk about you know, there's default energy, which are the patterns that we tend to fall back into the things that we believe about ourselves or life that influence how we show up. And when we're not being intentional about how we want to show up, we can show up in default, right? There's some pattern or way of being that we don't see that to host a retreat and to connect to source, we've got to shift that. We've got to shift the field to use our language, right? Mm -hmm. And when we do, when we're in this sourced energy space, the magic just comes through. You know, we use this word punctuation because one of my clients, I was having a conversation with her and I said, you know, it's kind of like their punctuation marks because she was putting a couple retreats on the book for 2024 and she started to realize that when she does that, she's saying, okay, source, show me what I need to know to lead in this next season. So she's got a retreat every six months, right? The retreat that happens in April is going to inform the next season of her body of work and how it evolves. And then there'll be another one that will punctuate and create and then inform the next season. I'm curious, Ashley, how you've seen that show up with your people. Well, you're just not the same. This is going to speak to point four, I think, but it's you're just not the same person on the other side of leading a retreat ever, right? And so you may lead this seemingly same retreat more than one time, but it's never really the same. Not when you're working sourced, like what we teach and what we talk about and train over here. It's like you're following what's alive. And, you know, the the person who leads the retreat in April is just not the same person who's leading it in October, which is part of the beauty of having that in your schedule and punctuating with it. We'll come back to that. I want to talk a little bit. So you're never the same as a leader. And we're also, the clients are not the same before and after the retreat. So back to point two, you know, Mm -hmm. it's my belief that we will work with better clients, more aligned clients, if retreats are a part of our business model. And I don't mean better, like better people, just better matches and people who are more clear about where they're going and what they want, and how they want you to support them. And the reason for that is that who they are coming into the retreat, they maybe have a blind spot, right? And they might be feeling like, Ashley, rescue me, because like, I clearly don't know what I'm doing, and I need you to fix me. (laughs) And I know I've, I've seen, you know, some of that energy over and over, over the course of my business. And at the end of the retreat, people are in a different space. Yeah. Yeah. You generally go on a retreat because there's something about your life that's not working in a, in the way that you want it to, or your business or whatever. So you're coming in, having created your life from whatever perspective you're operating from. And the whole point of the retreat is to shift that. So now you're in a new, a new point of view, a new energy, new things seem possible. And now you're just in the space of this 
clarity in this truth? And how do I now bring this into my life and integrate it in a really sustainable way? That's, that's an amazing space to work with someone in. (laughs) Yeah. When you said new things feel possible, it's like, I just want to ask people listening, imagine if all your clients were present to what's possible. Yeah. versus you having to convince them it's possible or, you know, drag them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, what if they yeah. were driving the ship and you were just there like sprinkling magic? Yes. And guiding the way, reminding them along the way. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. So the fourth point was around evolving your business model and your body of work each time you host a retreat. So we wanted to share a little story about that because we've been hosting an event called Shift the Field Live. I call it an event because it's about 111 people each time, give or take. We have a transformational intent. So it really is a retreat. Um, We go deep with it. And we want to reach, you know, a broader audience. So Shift the Field Live has been happening. We've had five now? Four. Four. We've had four, we're about to host our fifth. And each time it evolves, each time we pause and we tune in and we ask what wants to be born. So in our upcoming Shift the Field Live, we've realized, you know, we've done it a certain way so many times. The energy is always different. The who I've been as a leader has always been different. And this event, we're having Ashley lead more as a leader, right? She's leading our our leader body now. And so several things have changed about how we do the event, but we know we have this coming forward at a certain time Mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, source, show me, show me what does this want to be? So last time we were here in Colorado, the next one is in February, which we don't really want to be in Colorado. So we knew we were (laughs) going to do something different. So Ashley, talk about that process, because really, as you're stepping into leading more segments of this experience, you tuned in, you asked source. And so talk a little bit about what we're creating. Yeah, such is always our process over here, right? We know that there's a specific intent we want to deliver. So we start there, you know, what there, what, what is the intention or what we're offering? And then it's really just like a, a communication and a receiving So when I tuned into the energy of the event, there were a couple of things that felt clear, but one that I was particularly kind of surprised and excited by is that there felt like there were other people there with us, like in some way live at the event. So this is four times we've delivered it. It's completely virtual, but really intimate at the same time. We have this really great way of creating a studio and inviting people in. It's very engaging and, but it's all online. It's all virtual. And this time there were people there in the room with us. And I was like, "Mm, okay, what are these people doing here? Right. But it had the feeling of like a also very intimate behind the scenes kind of experience Mm -hmm. that people were, were there watching and observing how we create and how we're following what's alive and how we're adjusting to, you know, because if people could see the way we work, um, they get it, they would get it right. There's something about it. And so there's there, we have, we are creating because source said, and, and it feels alive that there will be people there in the event with us. So I feel like I want to ask, you said, it feels like there's people there. Mm -hmm. So tell people how you experience that. So y'all, we teach magic here, tuning Mm -hmm. into how source wants to work with and through you. So Ashley, how did that feel? Was Um, it sensation magic in the body? Was it a recognition, like a vision? Did um, you feel it like a vibration? Yeah, I feel more, um, it was definitely sensational. (laughs) Look, I had, it's like, I have to close my eyes to even get there, right? (laughs) It's, it was the experience of being watched. Mm. right? That's distinct. Like there was energy out there, but physically present watching Mm. us. And so, you know, it's different when you're live with people and like they're physically present with you. So it was the sensation of people being physically present. And then the kind of expression of it was this intimate behind the scenes peak. Mm -hmm. 
And so that was more kind of expression of how it came, it came in like words um, of what there was to create. So I want to talk about what's alive and Mm -hmm. following what's alive, because this is what's also so great about hosting is like, you might choose the date a year in advance. You might choose the venue a year in advance. You might know some things about this experience that's punctuating your business model, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, we know every time we host this, we invite people to our certification program in the season following this event, people who know they want to learn these skills. And so it starts to punctuate and define what we do for the rest of the year. And yet there's an aliveness So it's not stagnant, right? And I know for those who were at the last Shift the Field, I shared about how I had spent a whole bunch of time trying to systematize everything so that it was like I didn't ever have to think about it. It just happened automatically. However, Source is alive and we're, you know, we're representations of Source. And the truth is the things that are dying in our world, like the systems that are falling away are too attached to, you know, doing it a specific way. And we're moving toward more aliveness in how we operate. And so I'm just curious what that brings up for you, Ashley, as you, you know, you work with our clients, we work together on planning our calendar and following what's alive. And then there's the nuanced way we might make a change because ooh, this conversation that maybe we always, this thing we always teach mm-hmm. doesn't feel alive anymore. But mm-hmm. if we shift it like this, it's, it's very alive, meaning relevant, timely, people mm-hmm. are going to resonate and we know it because we feel it with our magic. Well, I immediately think, you know, we talk a lot here about this new emergence of leadership, right? That there's a new kind of leader being called for that is more dynamic and diverse and tuned in. You know, there's plenty of people that run businesses that they do this at this time and it is that way. And it's totally fine if that's how they want to operate. They teach the same class or the same seminar, the same, they've been teaching the same material for 20 years or whatever, but that's just not what we're doing or we're seeing is called for. So here we are in this co-creation with the people that are coming whose lives are as fluid and dynamic as ours. And we're meeting together in this sacred space for whatever it is that wants to come through. And we don't know where they're going to be in six months. The people that are in the room that we're there to serve you know, we're there, we're there for them and what they're calling for, but that's going to be ever changing until the moment we actually come together. And then something just really freaking magical gets to, and, and how could we plan around that when there's so many variables at play? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can build structure to be able to respond and hold it, in a reliable way, but it's like, we can't know exactly what's going to be there. Right. So. Yeah. That's making me think of the value and the potency of the people in the room and the behind the scenes and being able to watch what it's like to host and hold something that has an intention Mm-hmm. that we're clear about that we've promised that we know okay we we are committed to delivering this with a hundred souls and aliveness right you know a hundred souls that are bringing forward what so mm-hmm. you know you add the energy of the planets or the moon at the time and what's going on in culture and in the media it's there's not a way to serve our transformational intention without really being tuned into that mm-hmm. and being able to be flexible while also committed to the structure. I feel like, you know, you said it, these are the skills we teach our leaders. This is what's called for 
at this time is to be able to do that because, and, and to source a knowing and a confidence in the direction, in the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We call it transforming out loud, right? Yeah. If we're here to cause transformation, if we're here to shift the energy, if you're here to deliver information and teach things, then maybe it's not for you. But if you're here to create space for healing, magic, to cause a, a, a lifelong energy shift in what's possible with someone, and then it's what's called for. <laughs> yeah. And I would say, you know, people who have been teaching the same thing for 20 years are, at least in the online space, are experiencing very different results right now. Mm. So yes, you know, a lot of things that have been taught for a long time are still important and relevant and needed. And we're asking ourselves, like, does this feel true? Does this feel alive? Does this feel generative or not? And, you know, people who are listening, your clients are asking that. They want to follow what's alive. We're co-creating a new future together, a Mm -hmm. world with peace and joy and love and connection that doesn't happen by building on structures from the past. We can build upon structures from the past, but we have to be willing to let them go too. Well said. So I do want to let people know under this video, we have a link to shift the field live. And if you check it out, tune in, feel if it feels right for you, if it feels like a match to come play with Ashley and I for three days in February. And if so, in our order form, there's a little button at the top where you can click to register for the behind the scenes. There's 10 spots available. Mm -hmm. And that's at the time of this recording, 10 total. We're just opening registration. So by the time you listen to this, there may not be, but we have 10 seats to observe, watch, be in the space as we create this experience and serve 111 leaders from around the world in a virtual event. You get a dinner with us, um, a couple other things that we've created to make it really a special experience for those who come in person. Awesome. All right. Let's just recap. Punctuate your business model with retreats. Are you feeling it? One, magical people need structure. You may procrastinate forever on getting clear about the thing that your business is about or evolving your body of work or finally writing that book. It's a great place to test what you're going to put in your book. So magical people need structure and a retreat is a beautiful structure. Two, it's the best place to draw in aligned clients if you want to work with people over time. Ashley, it's making me think of when you had your first group that came from a retreat, right? Where they retreated with you first and then they chose to work with you. Do you remember what you texted me? This is the best. (laughs) I love having this committed group of people that I can just love on and pour into. Like they're here for it and they're committed. And yeah, it was amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. Right. You're about to do it again. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Source has a time and a place to show up. Number three, right? The people, the energy, the experiences are going to happen for you to get clear about your body of work for the next season, about how Source wants you to grow. Ashley, we have talked a lot about um, be careful what you name something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a rich master class. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You're about to get aligned with what you're about to teach. And so it's, you know, buckle up. That's right. That's right. And four, you will evolve your business model every time based on what's alive because you're working with humans who are showing up and bringing their stuff and you're adapting and learning what people want and making it better every single time. Hope to see you at Shift the Field. Anything you want to leave people with, Ashley? No, I mean, just 
yeah, if you had a little twinge of excitement hearing about it, then come be behind the scenes with us for sure. We'd love to meet you, see you, share the experience with you. We have a good time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> work hard, play hard. So <laughs> work hard, play hard. I know we we constantly look at each other and go, "This is what we do for fun." <laughs> So come get in on that. If you're a transformational being, come have some fun with us. Awesome. Hope to see you there. Thanks, Ashley. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you at Shift the Field Live.